What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're gonna be talking all about the difference between peak versus plateau pressure. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, talking about peak inspiratory pressure and plateau pressure. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a good understanding of the difference between the two. Before we jump into that, head over to respiratorycoach.com, check out the Respiratory Coach Academy where you'll find all the resources you need to pass that, that TMC and that CSC exam on the first attempt. Go check that out, I would appreciate it. Peak versus plateau. Now this doesn't look like a very interesting slide here, does it? And I left it like this because I want to draw. I haven't drawn in a while. So I'm like, you know what, let's do some drawing today. And so we've got my marker up. And the first thing we have to do is we have to define or understand what a normal pressure scalar graphic looks like, okay? And so we know that we can have something that looks like this. And there's various elements that we can label here, okay? Now, we start down here at baseline. And baseline, we know, is what we call peak. Now, this spot right here, you see where this is the highest point or pressure that was applied? This is our peak inspiratory pressure. You'll hear this oftentimes shortened as PIP. P I P. Now you have to be you have to be real careful when you're hearing and talking about these things because pip can sometimes sound like peep or peep can sometimes sound like pip. So we have to know and clarify if we ever are confused, especially students learning this and and, and learning how to speak mechanical ventilation. Ask for clarification. Pip. We're talking about peak inspiratory pressure. It's the the highest pressure during the inspiratory phase. Now, we'll go to Egan's page 1018, chapter 47. This is the 13th edition, and it defines it for us right here. Peak inspiratory pressure, PIP, is the highest pressure produced during the inspiratory phase. It, here's, here's, this is what's important right here. It is the sum of the pressures necessary to overcome airway resistance and lung and chest wall compliance. You see, all of that together, when we think about compliance and resistance, the peak inspiratory pressure is going to the result of all of those. And that's important because when we come down here and look at this spot right here, this little looks like a plateau because that's what it is. This is the plateau pressure. Now, plateau pressure is going to be more reflective of alveolar and chest wall compliance. But notice that I didn't say resistance. You see, when we are assessing our plateau pressure, what we have to do is we have to apply a short half a second to two second inspiratory hold at the end of the inspiratory phase. And what that does is it will return the zero, the, the flow will go back to zero. So essentially you cease the movement of gas and now just hold it in there and show me what my pressure is. And that's your plateau pressure. Now, plateau pressure, hi highly talked about. We know that we use it and focus on it a lot during our uh, lung protective strategies uh, because it is, in, in, in some form or fashion, the purest indicator of alveolar compliance. Much more valuable than peak inspiratory pressure when we are asking about, specifically about, compliance of the alveolar units. And so that's the difference in them. Now, various uh, data points suggest where these numbers should be kept. Arginet says we're target is to keep our plateau less than 30 centimeters of water pressure. Egan's right here says, uh, we want to keep it below 28 centimeters of water pressure. It says right here, levels greater than 28 centimeters of water pressure, alveolar damage from over distension is likely. That's plateau pressures. Now remember, your peak's always going to be higher than your plateau. So if we want to keep our plateau less than, let's just say 28 to 30, then our peak is obviously going to be higher than that. And the general consistency is you're looking for peaks to stay below 40 centimeters of water pressure. And so we, we need to know these numbers because as our patients change and these numbers start to change and we can start to see that, that our peak and story pressure is starting to climb and we were, at, we were at 28 centimeters of water pressure and now we're at 32 and now we're at 36 and now we're at 44. What's going on? Something is happening. 
something has changed. Is it airway resistance? Is it alveolar compliance? We don't know. That's what we have to figure out, right? But that's how we use these numbers to uh, help guide us along this therapy. Now, you can label various other portions of this. Obviously, the difference between plateau and PEEP is what we call driving pressure or maybe more appropriately referred to as tidal pressure. Uh, this video is not about that, but that's an important indicator also from a lung protective strategy perspective as well. And then we know that the difference between our peak and our plateau right here is uh, an indicator of raw, which is airway resistance. Now, this is very, very important when you are studying and learning how do I apply all this information from a peak versus a plateau perspective? What does it all mean? Let's go, let's look at a, let's look at another example here. So when we look at this again, I'm going to start over here. We're going to draw, I'm going to draw two different scenarios for you here. So you've got one of them that looks like this. And one that looks like this. Now we can now look at this and identify the difference between our peak inspiratory pressure and our plateau pressure. This is peak. This is plateau. Now, Remember, peak is the result of the pressure needed to overcome compliance as well as resistance, where, where plateau is the pressure reflective of alveolar compliance as well as chest wall compliance, but it's, 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 it eliminates the airway resistance from the, the, the calculation of the pressure. It, there's no airway resistance in it. And so what we know here is, is that if I told you back on a previous slide that the difference between PIP and plateau was airway resistance, then this is how you use this information to help decipher what is happening with your patients. So if you have a patient, your patient has, uh, I'm gonna actually start over. Let's, let's clear this. Here we go. So let's just say that you have your patient and they're cruising like this. And then this happens. Okay, so now we've got two different things. This is where your patient was. This is where they are now. So now we say, let's just say we over here, we had a plateau of uh, 20 centimeters of water pressure and we had a peak and spray pressure of 25. And now we have a peak and spray pressure of 45 and our plateau is still 20. Now, this is how you can use this because again, the difference between these two is airway resistance. The bigger that gap, the higher the airway resistance. So if you find this with your patient, then you have to think to yourself, okay, wait a second, let me assess more than one data point. If somebody says, hey, our pips were 25 and now they're 45 and that's all you know, you have no idea what needs to be done. You just know that your peak inspiratory pressures are higher and you being the registered respiratory therapist, you know that multiple things can cause that to increase. So what do we need to do? We have to assess further. We have to go in and say, okay, what are my plateau pressures? They were 20 and they're still 20. What does that tell me? That tells me that this is not an alveolar compliance problem. Instead, this is an airway resistance problem. That's what this tells me. So I now know, okay, because of this big gap right here, this is telling me that there's an increase in airway resistance. That's the problem that's causing my peak pressures to go way up from 25 up to 45. So what do I have to do? I have to troubleshoot this. I have to think airway resistance game. So what comes to mind? Excessive secretions in, in the airways? 100%. What about bronchospasm? What about just um, a, a, a patient maybe biting on the endotracheal tube and causing that tube to be smaller? Maybe you put in, for whatever reason, a smaller tube and now you've got more airway resistance. Probably wouldn't cause that big of a difference, but my point is, is that you just go down your checklist of airway resistance problems and fix it. If it's secretions, then you suction. If it's bronchospasm, give a bronchodilator. If it's a tube problem, then fix the tube problem, whatever it is. They need a bigger tube, or if they need a bite block so that they are not uh, biting on the tracheal tube, whatever it is, we know how we can fix that. You're not going to try to fix this with PEEP or by changing the tidal volume or by doing something different with... Um, you know, any of your, any of your, your, your rate or anything like that. That's not, that's not the game we're playing here. So you wouldn't do this and go, let, let's do a, let's do a recruitment maneuver. 
This, this is an airway resistance problem. Now, keep that in your mind. I'm going to flip it. We're going to look at another one here. So if we, uh, we're just going to uh, clean this up like this. And now let's just say that same patient here, 25 and 20, now is like this. And now you're at 35 and 40. You see, now we've got a different problem on our hands. You see, we were over here at 25 and 20, and now you get a call and they say, hey, peak pressures are 40 centimeters of water pressure. Our peak pressures have gone up from 25 to 40. I need more data because I can't just make a decision off of just that one number. I need multiple numbers. And now I know oh, my plateau pressures have also gone up. It was 20, now it's 35. Also notice something interesting here in this example. Remember the difference here is airway resistance. 25 minus 20, the difference was five. 40 minus 35, the difference is five. So what this tells me is, is that uh, the airway resistance is not the problem. This is a compliance problem. This patient maybe would benefit from a recruitment maneuver. This patient maybe has a pneumothorax that needs to be treated. This patient maybe has, maybe they were turning and rotating the patient and they, they tried to extubate themselves and you grabbed the tube and pushed it back in and now they're right main stemmed. Something about compliance is the problem here not resistance. And so we understand that that's how we use these numbers, peak and plateau pressures. We understand that trending them over time is very, very important to watch for and to get ahead of the curve when we are seeing trends of decreasing compliance or signs of increasing resistance. It's not ever just a snapshot. It's a, what are my pressures now? What were they yesterday? What were they six hours ago? What were they 12 hours ago? And that helps us to, to, to put a pattern and to trend the direction of our patients. So that's peak minus plateau or peak versus plateau. I'm gonna talk about some key points here. Remember that peak inspiratory pressure is a combination, the sum total of resistance and compliance. When we talk about plateau pressure, we see that resistance comes out of it and it is just compliance. That's the biggest, most biggest takeaway from understanding the difference between peak inspiratory pressure and plateau pressure is to understand what it is that those values tell you. Now, all of these examples in this video right here were obviously in volume control. It changes a little bit in pressure control, but the same concepts are still present. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're out there taking care of these patients receiving mechanical ventilation. I'm Respiratory Coach. Stay here with me on YouTube. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment and the subscribe button. If you haven't already done so, it'd mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. As always, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, at Joe Lewis. And don't forget to visit the website, respiratorycoach.com. If you want to send me an email or reach out for anything, speaking engagements or whatever, you can do so through that website right there, respiratorycoach.com. Remember, at the end of the day, average is easy. Don't be it.